Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to design gravity steel beams in the RAM Structural System RAM Steel Beam Design Module. Over the next series of videos, you'll learn how to design some gravity steel beams, which will include the process of entering the gravity beam design criteria, assigning any deflection criteria, and then designing the gravity beams and reviewing the results. The RAM Steel Beam Design Module performs a gravity analysis on all steel beams and joists in the model. When performing the design, it will assume that all members are simple supported. For this training course, we will be designing the gravity steel beams on the third and fourth level of a sample structure, which are steel members. The first thing we'll do is we'll enter the RAM Steel Beam Design Module. From the RAM Manager, we will go ahead to the Design Toolbar and click on the RAM Steel Beam icon. When you enter the RAM Steel Beam Design Module, the Modeling Framing Tables dialog may appear. The Framing Tables are where the Tributary Load and the Live Load Reduction calculations are performed. At this point, we are going to go ahead and click OK to create the Framing Tables. Before performing any designs in the RAM Steel Beam Design Module, we should first specify the Steel Beam Design criteria that will be used for this particular model, which can be accessed through the Criteria menu. After any criteria is changed, a new design should be performed. The first piece of criteria we will select is our Steel Design Code. Up in our Criteria menu, we will select the first option for Steel Design Codes, and then we will select the appropriate steel code to be used for our gravity steel beams and our smart beams. For this particular exercise, we are going to be designing our members according to the AISC 36010 LRFD code. After specifying your appropriate design code, we will then go ahead and click OK and acknowledge this change by clicking OK in any warning dialogs that might appear. The next criteria we will enter is the design defaults, also available from the criteria menu. In the beam design defaults criteria, we can select our maximum span to depth ratio limits, our unbraced length criteria, and your composite eye effective information. The maximum span to depth ratio limit is used to specify a maximum ratio limit and when selecting optimized sizes, RAM steel beam will select members that are at least deep enough to satisfy this criteria. A value of zero would indicate that there is no limit on this type of check. In addition, we can also select our unbraced length criteria and you should select the appropriate options to instruct RAM steel beam how to calculate the bending capacity, considering the bracing condition of the flanges. Finally, we will also enter our composite eye effective information. Now historically, equation C-I3-3 has been used to calculate eye effective. The errata to this commentary in the AISC 360 modifies that equation to be the calculation of I equivalent and indicates that I effective is 0.75 times I equivalent. For this particular exercise, we will elect to not use a maximum span to depth ratio limit. We will review all of our unbraced length criteria and select the appropriate options. And we will also select the checkbox to reduce I effective per the AISC 360 commentary. Once we enter all of our beam design defaults, we will go ahead and click OK. The next piece of criteria we will select is our camber criteria, which can be entered differently for composite or non-composite members. We will go ahead and select the composite option first. Here you can specify all of your camber options and information that the program can use to camber your members if you choose to camber your composite beams.
If you do not want to camber the composite beams, you can also just simply select the checkbox to do not camber. After reviewing all of the information, if you're going to allow cambering, we will go ahead and click OK and then move on to the non-composite members, again through the criteria menu. For this particular exercise, we will allow cambering for our composite members, but for our non-composite beams, we will elect not to camber. So we'll select our checkbox up here, and you can see that all of the other options have been now grayed out. Once you enter your parameters, we'll go ahead and click OK to accept the criteria. Next, we will enter our stud criteria again from the criteria menu. The stud criteria will be used to give information to the program on how to design composite members. We will review all the information in this dialog according to how we would like our members designed. For this particular exercise, we will keep all of the default information except when we go down here. In our stud distribution area, we will see that we have two options. We can use our optimum distribution or a uniform distribution. When we select Use Optimum Distribution, it means that Ram Steel Beam will divide your beam into three separate areas and you will be given a stud count for each area along the length of the beam. For this particular exercise, instead of that, we will use our Uniform Distribution, which means that Ram Steel Beam will give us a stud count after it performs a design and the number of studs it provides should be uniformly placed along the length of the member. We also have an option for design warnings when the beam fails the minimum composite requirement, which here in this dialog we can see that we have a minimum percent of full composite allowed at 25%. Now if a beam is too short or is skewed with reference to the span of the deck orientation, there may be some areas where it cannot get that full 25% composite action. So we have two options. We can use the bare beam section properties, which means that it will design it as a non-composite member. Or we can select the use composite section properties, which means that it will still provide a stud count along that particular member. After you enter all of your stud criteria, we will then go ahead and click OK. Next, we will enter our web opening criteria. Now, if your model does contain web openings, and our model does contain a few web penetrations on the third floor level, you can enter your web opening criteria here, which can be used to design stiffener place, plates if required around those web openings. We can enter some size restrictions, which will be used to optimize the dimensions, and we can also enter our yield strength of steel for these stiffeners. We can also select if you want to allow the stiffeners on one side of the web or on both sides. After reviewing all of the information in the web opening criteria, we will then go ahead and click OK. The last item that we will review in this video under our criteria menu is the joist criteria. In this particular model for this training, we do have several joists located at the roof level, so we should review our joist criteria before performing a design. In the joist criteria, we can enter information for joists with uniform loads, joists with non-uniform loads, and also joist girders. We'll also enter an allowable stress ratio for our joist design at 1.0, but lesser values could be used if you want a more conservative design. After reviewing or specifying all of your joist criteria, we'll go ahead and click OK, and then we're going to save our model before performing any further operations. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.